Hello and thanks for visiting our website, rebuilderinabox.com. Today we're going to rebuild the CS144D, prevalent on Cadillac. You can also find the CS144D on high amp Chevy truck. You know you have a CS144D by the needle bearing surface on the back. The earlier ones like this here have a regular roller bearing boss that you can see from the outside. Those are normally before 1992 and our kits start in 1992. So you shouldn't really run into one of them. Most of them are going to be this version right here. This particular version on Cadillac is renownedly popular and you can recognize it quickly by the two threaded bolt holes on the back. Some of them have a pressed on pulley and some of them mostly are just a regular pulley assembly in the front. But basically all the CS144 kits and videos will be the same. First thing we're going to do is scribe or paint or chalk a line down the side so you, you can properly realign it when you put it back together. Be sure and install your safety glasses, then take the four bolts that hold the two cases together out. If you have to, if there's a lot of corrosion, put some of your favorite rust bust down into the bottoms where the bolts go into the aluminum frame. You can also turn on this model, you can turn it upside down and get rust bust on the screws from underneath. The most efficient method after you don't have to, to keep from resorting to heat is to tap on the sides and that helps break them loose. And then it's a good idea to reapply a little bit more rust bust. There's the four bolts out. These are E7s. 99% of the time you'll find 5 16 heads on them. Just hold the back half with your left hand and tap out the front half. Then pull the two halves apart. Next step, we need a half inch impact with a 15 <coughs> socket. Put a rag on the pulley and just short burst it off. <coughs> then when this comes loose, usually there's a, a flat washer or some type of lock washer. The pulley comes right off. And be sure and remember which spacer goes behind the pulley in the front because there's another spacer here and you have to be very careful not to confuse that with the internal spacer. So in order to be absolutely clear on which spacer goes external we're going to put a little red mark on that and a red mark there. Because those two spacers are very similar in width and we do not want to get those confused. At this point our secret ingredient is nail polish. You can see the Equate brand there available at any Walmart or drugstore. Just pour a little bit of that down on the top of this bearing and let it dissolve the red Loctite that's between the inner race of the bearing and the shaft. Usually works in about 10 minutes. If it doesn't start to work and you're trying to take that shaft out of there, we're going to show you how in a minute, and it doesn't work, you can use a little bit of heat or you can reapply the, the Loctite solvent again. What we've done here is we've opened up our vise far enough so that the rotor itself sits down in the vise but it's still close enough to support the frame. Then we're going to put 
the pulley nut and screw it down three-fourths of the way. Leave a couple of threads showing on the top. Then we get a two by four and a hammer. It would be a good idea to take a rag and put it on the beam so that no damage is done to the shaft in the needle bearing area. We take the drive in frame off. It still has the bearing in it and then underneath is the spacer that we were speaking of earlier. Just to mess with us, they retain this drive-in bearing with a cold roll. You can see a little bit of the, um, just the very end of the bearing is been rolled over by the aluminum so we have to uh, bust that out of there if you want to you can uh, if you want to take make the next step easier you can take a screwdriver and chisel the end of it and go around in a circle and uh, chisel little pieces of that off and it makes uh, taking the bearing out easier but uh, you really don't have to. You just take the pulley, set it on the vise, and then set the drive-in housing upside down. It sits right down in that pulley really nicely and leaves you some room towards the bottom. Then we're going to take a three-quarter socket and it does come out. If it gives you a little too tough of a time, uh, like I was saying earlier, you can take that screwdriver and chisel some of the cold roll out of the way. But you can see here where we just broke the uh, part of the casting off. And then when we go to put it back in, we're gonna heat up the plate and drop the bearing in with some with plenty of red Loctite on it. And then we're gonna use a chisel to stake it back over again. This is the inner race of the needle bearing and the slip ring end. This is the slip ring where the brushes ride. So the slip ring end bearing is a needle bearing and this is the actual, this shaft is the inner race. You want to make sure that to clean that up really well with some um, a really fine grade of oxide paper and make sure that you get all of the dust out of this area here so that it's been there's no sandpaper grit left over to interfere with the bearing uh, particularly in this hole so the first thing we're going to do is clean up the uh, inner race of the needle bearing this is removable you can pull that off if you have to if you're um, it's not common but if there's a real heavy groove in it and it just won't come out or if it's been sitting around for a long time and it's pitted in this area if there's pits uh, you can't reuse it but that's not very common we can send you a special order for that and you just simply uh, take a chisel, heat it up real good, and pound a chisel in this area right here to split that apart and get it coming off there. And then the, um, the new one simply taps back on with the hammer. It's nice if you have a lathe, but if you don't, uh, you just want to clean that up as best you can. Don't really try and remove anything from the slip rings. Just polish up what's there. Um, critics might say, well, this has to be perfectly round. 
it already would be perfectly around um, unless there's like some hellacious grooves in it and even a certain amount of a groove up to uh, a thirty second of an inch would be something that would be tolerable it's not common on this you would have to have some sort of uh, uh, an oil leak or antifreeze leak in it that would actually help it burn some holes but basically long story short just take some steel wool or a really light abrasive uh, scuff pad and clean everything up and be sure and get all of the uh, dust out of the needle bearing area looking down in the rear end of it uh, you'll see the three stator leads and the three 11 30 seconds nuts take those off now we're going to hold on hooking our fingers underneath the winding part of it and just tap down on the metal comes right off there's your three stator leads we have seven smaller E6 uh, star heads to take out and one 10 millimeter sometimes these E6's will be quarter inch um, the thing to remember is when you go to put them back together there's three insulated because this bar right here has to be insulated um, also this one's insulated and then there's two grounds here for the brush actually three grounds here for the brush and then these two on the negative side of the rectifier here we have the brushes brush holder and over here is the um, voltage regulator which is 408 on the version that we're working on uh, for Cadillac and it's 411 for the Chevy and Chevy trucks so right now we'll pretty much tell you what to put back in there and which ones are insulated and so forth uh, just go ahead and take all those bolts out and you just kind of flip it upside down this is the uh, dust guard for the brushes uh, we take that out by flipping it upside down and you'll see the little plastic rivet right here just take a center punch or a big paper clip straightened out or even a coat hanger and tap that straight down through and it pretty much just falls out if it remains intact you can reuse it by placing a little bit of RTV in this area uh, first clean up your plate really well and then uh, reinstall, reinst reinstall that rivet because you can see it sticking out and all it does is once that rivet goes down through then it spreads the tangs on the other side we do it here at the shop uh, however doing it at home for yourself uh, you really wouldn't have to have this in there uh, so that we can remain our professional status uh, we do reinstall them but to do it at home it, you really receive uh, I would say very little benefit of reinstalling it it does help keep the uh, the dust off the brushes and stuff but if you're not in a uh, uh, a really heavy dirt environment the um, the problems that you can have versus the um, just the problems that you would have by leaving it out you would probably be better off just to omit this when when you reassemble here we have a one inch half inch socket set the plate on top of it here we have a half inch extension we're going to drive the needle bearing out
to give you the rough idea of the uh, outside diameter of the tool that you're going to be using to pound that needle bearing out it's just about 32 millimeters you don't want to go too big on that or too small because um, you don't want to get it stuck in in that's about uh, 1.26 inches we're going to do some quick quick electrical tests with the ohm meter these three leads are supposed to be continuity to each other and then you take a spot um, and buff a spot or sand a spot down to bare metal on the laminations and none of them should have any continuity continuity at all with the metal laminations so these three have continuity to each other and all three of them are insulated from the laminations also testing the rotor you have continuity from here to here which is one big long winding starting here or starting here and ending there and at no point should this be have any continuity with the shaft so with our own meter set on high okay we have one of the leads on the laminations on the steel and there we're touching all three leads you have no continuity because the needle is not moving and then there we're testing all three leads to each other so our quick test for the stator leads test good and then we place our leads from side to side on the slip ring and that tests good and then we put our test lead from one of the slip rings into the shaft and that tests good because the needle doesn't move at all it's perfectly open here's a rundown of the parts real quick this is the battery stud output post with the insulator the nut that holds it on behind it this is the long insulator tube and the three short insulator tubes two brush springs this is a capacitor with an insulator on one side we're going to point that out to you how to reinstall that voltage regulator brush holder assembly this has to be this piece right here this connector going up it goes to the rectifier is going to have to be uh, desoldered you put this in a small pair of uh, in a small vise or a pair of uh, vise grips and hold on to that and then hold on to this with needle nose pliers heat this up with a soldering gun and then pull straight up this is uh, just a paper insulator uh, we recommend reusing that it just goes behind the rectifier when you go to reinstall okay here we have the new regulator this is gonna say 9730 on it that's what we call the 408 you take the brush holder and you'll see how the two holes match up just push that tab down on there and then this one that you took off the old regulator it's all cleaned up on a buffing wheel or a sanding stick just pushes onto there like that so that you have that configuration the brush holders over by the plug this is going to solder really quick we're just going to solder right here and here you're going to need at least a uh, 200 watt soldering gun
Then we're going to put dielectric grease on both sides of this. We're going to put the whole drive-in housing in an oven for about 20 minutes, heated at 300, then take some red Loctite, totally coat the outside race of the 303 bearing, and just drop it in. If it doesn't drop right in, you can give it a little bit of assistance by tapping it in on the outside race. Now we're going to um, make a bunch of stakes, what we call staking, with a sharp small chisel and what we're going to do is put this right on the edge and then hit at an angle going in towards the bearing to make a little bit of a wall just to cover the very tip of the edge of the bearing. So there's what it looks like going all the way around. And then when you look closely, you can see how the very edge has been smashed over to cover the corner of the bearing. And when you get 15 or 20 of them, it provides a uh, pretty stable wall for bearing retention. Also with the um, red Loctite. Similar to the drive-in housing, we're going to cook the uh, slippering in housing in an oven at about 300 degrees, maybe 325, for a period of 20 to 30 minutes to get everything expanded. The needle bearing, you can also freeze that to make it actually really easy to go in and put oil on the outside edge of it. If you still meet any resistance tapping that bearing in, Take your one inch deep well and set it on top of it like that and then put your bearing on top of there and tap it in. <clears throat> and then find something flat on the bottom to tap it in with your hammer. Even a piece of wood would work just so you, you normally wouldn't want to tap directly onto the bearing itself. Okay, you can find the big hole in the uh, slip ring end plate and you'll know that that's where this the battery stud in the insulator goes up through with that hole to the left the rectifier sits right in then we need to have dielectric grease in that area there on the capacitor connector you'll notice the insulated side and the non-insulated side. Put that in next. The insulated side goes down. Then you grab the regulator, connector, brush holder assembly. Make sure that the brush wires are pressed down flat against the plastic brush holder. Then you'll see the opening here for the plug and the opening here. So that just lays on there. and the connector goes over to the thirds stator terminal. We're going to use one of the ground screws and underneath it and right on the side of the brush holder here place a little bit of dielectric or white lithium grease and get that screwed in. The one that we're using for that connection here is to reinstall properly, I mean to build everything back to the way it was originally. It has the elongated end on it, whereas the other ones have the shorter. That's the one that goes right there. Then we have two more grounds. 
and we put dielectric or white lithium grease on those two. Here's a shot of the three grounds, the one with the long tube on it, and then these two. Just to get everything started, we're just going finger tight. Then we're going to put the battery post in from the other side. Okay, here's a look at the four insulated screws. This one here, obviously, it's different from the rest. We'll show you where that goes. But just looking at these three, you'll see that these two have a little bit thicker insulation on the shafts, and this one is a little bit thinner than the other two. These two go in the rectifier. Well, actually, these three go in the rectifier and this one, the one that's different from the rest, if the insulation has been redone by an aftermarketer then these three may be the same and this one would be different but normally if it's OEM these two will be thicker and this one will be the thinnest. This is the one that goes in the regulator. The thinnest one goes right here in the regulator. Then the thickest one holds down the connector strap with the condenser in it and goes into the rectifier. Then the other two go in these two. So you got the two that were thicker but the same, the thin one and the long white one. Okay, let's go back over this one more time. We're going to take our E6 and go around and make sure that all seven of these are tight. And you can see where we've taken the red and just go right around in a circle and check seven of them. This is the smallest insulated one, a ground. The two insulators that are the same, the two grounds here and here, and the long insulator. Then we need to take the 10 millimeter and assure, assure that the nut holding the battery stud in is very tight because that takes quite a bit of torque to hold that and it'll take quite a bit of torque um, when you want to tighten it down. Then we're going to take the um, pin and push it all the way down leave a little bit sticking out and make sure that it's coming through the hole that it's designed to so we can pull the brush pin after assembly. Then we're going to take our paper insulator with the opening down and it fits right over top of this divot. Stick that in there. One of the quality assurances that we perform during our rebuilds is we take black tape and tape up to the bottom of the eyelet in this area here and go down about the width of one black tape. Then inspect the outside diameter by taking a hammer and tapping very very lightly to ensure that your eyes follow a complete circle and that every none of the windings can be out of place. Also you take the ball side of the hammer and tap all the way around and some of the windings when they come from the manufacturer aren't really perfectly placed or maybe just the years of use kind of swells them a little bit 
but you will find uh, occasionally, actually frequently, uh, windings that can go back a little bit so that they don't rub the rotor. So this needs to be done inside, outside diameter, all the way around on both sides. Then we're going to set the three leads down on the three studs. And push it down in. Before you do that, you want to make sure that this strap is in place and not leaning over or touching anything. Then we put the three nuts down onto the studs, tighten them down, make sure that the stator is sitting squarely in the plate. Now we have these two metal spacers. We mark the one that goes on the outside, but if you lose your mark or you forget, this is the shorter of the two. If you set them side by side, and look in from the side. The highest one, the largest one, goes on the shaft first. Also, we've polished that with some emery cloth. We want some red Loctite on there. Squeeze the plate on, put the outer spacer in, fan, spacer, pulley, lock washer, nut. Make sure that all the dust and any dirt is clean from between these lines, from between the two slip rings, and particularly that this hole is free of any dirt. Uh, blow it out, wash it out, do whatever you got to do to make sure that that thing is really nice and clean. And then we take a little bit of um, white lithium and put it down in that hole. Rebuilders normally notate the position of the voltage regulator plug-in according to the spool and the threaded mount. The, the spool is called 6 o'clock and then the threaded mount would be at 12 o'clock and that gives you relationship to the voltage regulator plug. In other words, that would be this one is known as uh, 11 o'clock. So the voltage regulator, when it mounts on there, is approximately 11 o'clock with respect to the spool being at 6 and the threaded ear being at 12. The plug's at 11. We've tightened the bolts down in a crossing pattern, just finger tight at first and then finish the torque off in a cross pattern and your first thing that most people want to do is pick it up and spin it to make sure it spins but before you do pull the pin so that you hear the brushes click into place then you can hold it in your hand and give it a spin nothing should be hitting it should be quiet if it isn't quiet you can tap it around a little bit Maybe it just isn't quite seated.
and then retighten. And if you get a little bit of a hit, it's not really the end of the world. It's not going to be a bearing. Uh, a lot of times there's rust on the inside of the um, stator and it doesn't quite get all taken off. You can sand it off uh, with some sandpaper while you got it apart. But um, at this point we're done.